Hello everybody and welcome. This is my little little abode here where I can get out and it's morning and I shall just fly around and show you what I have. First of all we have a, a little island and on the island I've got some, quite a few solar panels a little garden but I generally don't actually eat anything from the garden except for strawberry raspberry juice and as you can see the we're in a we're in a beach area got plenty of sugar cane for paper and plenty of cactus and just over here we have a a little island with a with a drill an oil drill on it somewhere over here there's a, a creeper which I shall just quickly deal with And over here I have a magic island, which is uh, rather an interesting island. They have all sorts of strange trees and plants. Magical forest. And right up here, there is a slime island. Unfortunately I've got hover mode on at the moment so it makes a bit more noise than normal. And quite often the king slime will generate here and other mobs. What I also have, if we just go and have a quick look, there's another small island here. which is of take a variety here I have a little farm which looks empty but isn't but I'm so high up you can't see it but there's plenty of cows, sheep and pigs And if I just go a little bit more northwest, we come across quite a large uh, village. And here we see a meteor that's above the surface. In fact, where I am, there's quite a few meteor meteors above the surface. And a rather interesting tree. Which is redwood. Oh, that's not a little creeper, let's just deal with him. As you can see, what I'm using here is a crossbow and it has quite a decent range on it. And just here, I have a very large hole and at the bottom of that large hole is a stronghold. Which I'll come back to that later on. So 
for the time being we shall come back to that to the house and have a look inside in fact I can make this a little bit faster by using a travel lamp by using a travel anchor on the travel anchors you can label them so when you press shift you can see where it is so that's the workshop and here I've got some spawner tanks and some spawners just by right clicking it takes you to the spawners and in this one here I've got uh, two spiders one enderman one nether I forgot what type it was and some blazes. In fact, we have to go and have a look, see what I've got in here. Another skeleton, I think. A skeleton, but another skeleton. But I won't stay in there too long. And in this one here, I have a, another mob, a mob spawner with um, a blitz. So and at the back of this I have some tanks. So every press uh, spawner tanks here. Sometimes mobs spawn here. You have to be careful. And this tank is already empty, so I shall have to move this around and put the full tank here and as you can hear there's quite a lot of mob spawning the power for these devices is coming from solar panels up at the top which are being stored in this basic capacitor bank Oops. As I said, sometimes the spot more the mob spawn outside, which is not so comfortable. Right, back to the front of the spawners, and as you can see, lots of while I'm in here, lots of animals spawn. And what's caught from the mob grinder here is whatever we see. So we get quite a lot of sp strings from spiders, quite a lot of uh, Enderman one with a skeleton skull, sulphur and necrotic bones. And this one I've taken it all out with the snowballs and uh, blitz rods. If I come up one level here, this is really the workshop. And from here we see uh, an Aubrey farm. And this is really full of Aubreys now of all sorts. We've got iron aubreys, copper aubreys, tin aubreys, gold aubreys, essence berries. And again this is also powered by solar panels. In fact it doesn't need much power to supply to power these. And here we have one harvester and one sludge boiler. And everything that comes in just gets picked into this chest here and then goes down through these uh, transport pipes into this this chest here and from this chest here they get pulled and goes through the packers so I'm basically using cyclic assemblers to pack different metals so as you can see here an iron aubrey comes in when it reaches nine it comes out at the bottom as a, an iron ingot and as you can see yeah, over a period of time there's quite a large amount of metals that get produced and what else gets produced is the uh, output from the sludge boiler and you see from here you get all sorts of interesting things we have uh, dirt quite a lot of dirt podzol sand red sand, decaying wheat, ash, mycelium, soul sand, netherrack, lots of clay, gravel, peat, 
heat sand and these are Aubrey's which I put in before when I was mining and picked up Aubrey's and at the bottom here I've got uh, essence berries so I can take a stack of essence berries eat those and get a lot of XP as I will just quickly demonstrate here by eating the now I have plenty of essence but it's still and quite a lot of XP okay and my sorting system is basically a combination of different types of chests gold chests and better barrels with lots of filters on and at the very end of here we have the uh, deep storage units which can take a large number of items so we have a, a 500,000 nether axe stored stone I've also got quite a lot 15,000 well, actually not so much cobblestone and 767 essence berries because they get a lot of those here I have some cyclic assemblers and these ones are basically producing um, items for leadstone solar panels okay the next floor up oh around the back here I have power units for the things and rather a lot of essence here uh, we have a leadstone a full leadstone energy cell this is a dimlet researcher just in case I've got a generator here and these are all going through these red net energy cables coming from the top here which is in fact a boiler but I don't need this one set to face this side so I just turn it off and we've got basically at the bottom this is a reactor so I've got a nuclear reactor there which is powering all of these devices going through the back and you'll notice that all of these here, which you can't really see that well, but let's just have a quick look. And see, this, these red net energy cables just go along all the back of these machines. And I shall put back this stone now. And here I have an elevator to go up to the next story, which is containing uh, some more tools. In fact, here we have a, a tesseract that's pulling things from the nether. And here we have an energy, another edge an energy cell, which is uh, being used to power the tesseract. The power from that's coming from the reactor. And as you can see, it's allowing uh, 55 in and 50 out so it doesn't come in at an extraordinary high rate to use all my power up here I have a wall here I have a, a chunk loader the idea of the chunk loader is to keep the tesseract in operation when I'm in the nether or somewhere else and here I have a little chest that I put one item in here it will stop the tesseract what it's doing here is, is activating this gate and turning off the tesseract. The tesseract is set for low enabled. So when the signal goes high, because there's something in here, it turns it off. Turning it off, turns that back on, and sure enough, you'll see most of items coming out of the mostly netherrack coming out of the tesseract here. And here, what I had here was a with a better barrel containing cobblestone and the idea of this this cobblestone is going through this uh, ender chest here into the into here which is uh, an empty ender chest and feeding items into this hopper which are feeding items into this recycler and eventually going to a mass fabricator here and it's generating UU matter very slowly here I have a disk drive and a computer and the computer is running a little program to control the energy for the uh, reactor and what this 
this can be a little this is a very small little program and I shall detail that in the notes basically controls the amount of energy stored here and when the energy gets full it turns it offline and in fact we can quickly go up and have a look and the energy cells actually are completely out at the moment and I have two ports one input and one output this reactor output port here is taking items out and feeding them in, into this cyanitic reprocessor and those uh, items from there come into this chest here and this chest then takes them out and puts whatever we have into the reactor and at the moment I have 22 plutonium and two yellow rights here which is probably isn't enough but we shall go and make some more in a minute on the top floor I have a Tinker's Construct smell tree and on the walls are a lot of smelted metals and in here I have a tank on top of the tank we have a another tesseract in fact this tesseract is receiving anything and it's just getting pumped into here this tesseract was connected to the nether to a pump in the nether but I've disabled that at the moment let's just turn my jetpack off and now out here we have a back door Oops, let's just get rid of him. Number nine. And here we have a little nether portal. Well, again, I have a travel anchor here, so it's not so important. To go outside and a quick visit to the nether. And at the top here, I have a yet another travel anchor leading to a quarry I better turn on the jetpack here this is a rather large quarry in fact it's uh, almost 64 by 64 and as you can see it's digging out a large hole down here in fact I've already quarried right down to the uh, down to bedrock and if you look up here this is also bedrock and there's all sorts of interesting materials this is there uh, draconium or gold or in fact, let's just go down to the bottom and quickly turn off the pack. And as you can see, the current um, quarry is over here. I'm not sure how deep it is at the moment. It looks reasonably near towards the end of the quarrying. be around about here in terms of level so the quarry's got a little bit more work to do before it reaches the bottom and then when it does we shall just pick up this uh, the blood and over here we obviously have quite a large amount of um, obsidian and a very large amount of lava so which we can always use for again to put a pump on it right go back to the portal
Why do I press F1? Right, the portal. So you don't need to spend too much time in another. Maybe we have a twi Twilight Forest portal. And let's go back to the front. You see it's quite useful having this travel anchors. You can jump around about 125 blocks at one go. Here I have a an integration table, uh, an assembly table for making gates and things. And at the top you saw before there were some um, solar panels feeding into a bat box and these are also being some more leadstone panels here feeding into this capacitor bank. It's just a double capacitor bank that's just joined together. And anything else with the assembly table, which in fact I moved, ends up in this chest here. And it's just I have a few items for the smeltery, plus a few uh, gates and chipsets. And I think that's about my introduction for my base for today. I hope you enjoyed watching. Bye.